Today's video will demonstrate how to use pseudocode to solve a problem. Hello, I'm James Helfrich. Many people say, hey, I don't want to draft a solution. It's extra work. I don't want to do stuff that I'm just going to throw away. Um, this video will demonstrate how to use pseudocode to help you arrive at a solution and not waste any coding effort in the process. Pseudocode has two main purposes. The first as a design tool and the second as a communication tool. So as a design tool, pseudocode helps us manage our design ideas as they progress from high-level ideas down to programming constructs. So for an example, if I'm going to try to go from English to machine language with a programming language in between, how do you bridge the gap between English and the programming language? Well, pseudocode starts at a very English-like definition, and as we massage it through multiple iterations, it comes down to close to the programming language. As a communication tool, pseudocode helps us share design ideas with other stakeholders. Oftentimes, these stakeholders are separated by time. In other words, you're going to write a design idea and then months or years later, someone else will see it, or space, you're going to send it on email to another team. We're going to focus on the design tool component. This is best explained by example. I'm going to write a function in Python to convert a JSON object into a dictionary that can be used to authenticate a user. So I'm going to start with this JSON file that has two keys, username and password. Notice how the username list and the password list, they kind of have to correspond to each other, but I want to turn this into a dictionary of King Arthur, colon, runaway, and Lancelot, clone. She turned me into a newt. A newt? Well, I got better. All right, let's see how this works. Okay, I like to write this function called get authentication. Now my test authentication will call that function, make sure it works. So the first step to the pseudocode process is to write a broad definition. And I'll actually put this in a function header. Okay, so the comment says this function will open a JSON file, convert it to a dictionary, extract the two lists, and then combine them into a dictionary. So here's the problem definition written in plain English. That's the first step. Now notice I get to actually double count that first step as a function comment block. And so now I'm gonna outline the steps. Okay, so notice how I took the English definition that was just a sentence, and then I broke it up into its steps. Now my steps are still gonna be English, but they're in the format that I'm gonna read things. In other words, I'm adding a little bit of structure as I go, as I understand more about the problem space, but this is still definitely English. What's the next step? Okay, so now I'm gonna take my open with JSON file and I'm gonna be a little more detailed with a try accept block, then open the file and put into the file handle called file. Read data into a text stream, I'm gonna be a little more explicit. Um, data.txt as the variable name will get file.read. Convert the data to a dictionary, I'm gonna use json.load, extract the two dictionaries, and then finally combine it up with a zip. Okay, I think I'm ready for the, the Python code now. Okay, now I'm done. Notice how as I replace my pseudocode with actual code, then I can compare the before and after, and my text version of the pseudocode remains as comments. So this means that I have very little redundant work. Basically, all the steps I did to create the pseudocode turned into the comments that I used to make a well-commented function when I'm done. You can learn more about this in the Designing with Pseudocode section of the Pseudocode chapter of the Software Design textbook.